The Philippines is a vibrant and beautiful democratic nation whose citizens are friendly, hospitable, peace-loving, and devoutly religious people. About 80% of the Philippine population are fervent Catholics who have versus war, violence, and animosity. However, a dictator almost destroyed the light of freedom and democracy and instilled fear and oppression in the hearts of Filipinos. But this is a story of the Filipinos rising once again from the darkness through a peaceful revolution for freedom and the restoration of democracy that broke the barrier of oppression and fear. On September 21, 1972, former President Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law throughout the islands of the Philippines. They have uh, proclaimed martial law in accordance with the powers vested in the President by the Constitution of the Philippines. As he signed Proclamation No. 1081, he abolished the Constitution, shut down Congress, and called out the armed forces to prevent lawless violence, invasion, insurrection, rebellion, and prevention of imminent danger. Marcus wanted this law to be effective so it would be able to protect the Republic of the Philippines from communist and Muslim rebels and from his political opponents. According to Marcos, this rule was for the control of the country into what he called a new society. Unfortunately, martial law enabled him to stay in power indefinitely, despite having been elected twice as president of the country. As he suspended the Congress and the Senate, he replaced it with a parliamentary system controlled by him and his cronies called the Loyalists. Marcos announced that the military would monitor the Filipino people and impose military law throughout the archipelago of the Philippines. The military would watch over the provinces and cities all day, especially in Mindanao Island, where Muslim separatists tried to separate from the republic. Marcos believed that the ongoing unrest was a threat to national security. After the declaration of martial law, the railway, water, telephone, and power companies were all shut down. All schools in the Philippines were closed for a week. All media, including newspapers, TV, and radio stations, were censored and suppressed by Marcos. And the employees, including the journalists, were arrested. Opposing politicians were also arrested, including former Senator Benigno Aquino Jr., also known as Nino Aquino, who was part of the Liberal Party, the political party that was against Marcos and his allies. In addition, many Filipinos were kidnapped or even killed because of their opposition to the Marcos regime. To propagate fear, the military would ransack some of the homes of the opposition. When the Filipinos did not follow the rules, they would be abducted by the military and would be sent to detention camps and holding cells. During interrogations, they would be punished and tortured. Locked up in a detention camp, women would sometimes be taken from the military and would be violently raped and heinously assaulted. The Filipino people saw what was being done to them. They knew that martial law violated their rights and squelched their freedom. Because of fear and intimidation by the military, they started to lose their confidence in speaking out to the Marcuses and to the world on how much they were suffering. After eight years of torment, thousands of Filipinos have been killed and imprisoned, and many have lost hope in seeing a bright future for the Philippines and for their families. One of Marcuses' political adversary and critic, former Senator Benigno Nino Aquino Jr., who was exiled in Boston, Massachusetts, returned to Manila to confront Marcos. He scheduled a flight back to the Philippines under the guise of Marshal Bonifacio. He disguised himself because he was afraid of being assassinated. Tragically, on August 21, 1983, as Ninoy was stepping out of the plane, he was fatally shot in the head and died on the airport's tarmac, despite being surrounded by police. 
His death enabled the Filipino people to wake up from their long nightmare. It triggered a fire of nationalism back into their hearts. Filipinos all around the world were outraged after Ninoy's assassination. To pacify the people, Marcos allowed the country to have a snap election between him and Maria Corazon, Cori Aquino, the widow of Nino Aquino, on February 7, 1986. After the snap election, Cori Aquino won the total votes. However, the Commission on Elections declared Marcos the winner. Filipinos were outraged and felt cheated after this highly controversial election. More Filipinos grew a grudge and hatred towards the Marcos administration. They would disobey the laws even though it would cost their lives. They began to take action because Cori Aquino, Fidel V. Ramos, part of the Lacas Party, meaning Strong Party, and leaders of the opposition were there to help them. In secret, Filipinos started an organization of protest. They expressed their anger and disdain towards Marcos by making posters and joining rallies in the streets of Manila. Some posters would say, no bullet can kill the spirit, meaning that even if we die, Marcus will never stop us from fighting for what is right. Another poster said, Bakit ganyan buhok ni Madam? Diyan daw nakatago ang Golden Buddha ni Marcus. In English, it says, Why is Madam's hair like that? Allegedly, that is where Marcus's Golden Buddha is hidden. Because of the rampant tampering and cheating in the election, General Ramos and Defense Minister Enrile, former allies of Marcus, became outraged as well. Together with the supporters of Cori Aquino, they called for the resignation and ouster of President Marcos. They started the EDSA Revolution, also known as the People Power Revolution, on February 22, 1986. EDSA stands for Epifanio de los Santos Avenue, which is where the revolution happened. In English, it means the Epiphany of the Saints Avenue. This revolution was a bloodless struggle. Everyone who wanted to give justice for Aquino did just that. In retaliation, President Marcos ordered for the arrest of General Ramos and Minister Enrile. However, the Filipino people started to congregate in Edsa and Camp Crame to defend and protect the beleaguered rebels. Thousands of ordinary citizens gathered in support of General Ramos and Minister Enrile and their troops. Many of them brought rosaries, roses, and blessed statues of Mary, Santo Nino, and Jesus. They countered impending violence with silent prayer. The nuns would group together arm in arm and walk in front of the tanks to pray. They would offer the soldiers the roses and rosaries they brought. Hundreds of defiant Filipinos would push the tanks away, showing that fighting is not the answer. The soldiers then realized that they should stop obeying Marcos. They were unwilling to shoot and kill their own countrymen. They realized that Marcos treated this country with no respect for the Filipino people, and that he only wanted to be in power as long as he lived. Eventually, the military joined General Fidel Ramos in the stand for freedom. After three days, President Marcos was ousted and was exiled to Hawaii until his death in 1987. Cori Aquino was inaugurated as the first female president in the Philippines and the whole of Asia. A new constitution was ratified and a new democratic government was established. The Edsa Revolution thus ended the tyranny of Marcos and the oppression of martial law and thus restored freedom and democracy to the Philippines. It united the Filipino people, young and old, rich and poor. They realized their strength as a people, standing up for others who have sacrificed their lives for their country and for freedom. This displays that even the powerless people can defeat a dominant dictator, that they can break the barrier of oppression and fear through peaceful and nonviolent means.